twisted and confused. But at its essence, prayer is simply talking to God. The God who spoke the universe into creation, who gives us life and breath, who holds all things together. This God wants us to talk to him. In the vastness of all that exists, he actually cares about us personally and individually. How can we not pray to such a God, such a loving God? Wherever we are, how can we not thank him for what he has done in our lives? Or cry out when we need help, when we need forgiveness, when we are afraid, when we give, when we give thanks for all the blessings or question from where our next meal might come from? Why would we live a life apart from him? It's not about a formula or how you stand or how your posture is or how well the words that you choose that will never impress the author of time and space. It's simple obedience. God has made himself available to us. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to trust in him, to acknowledge our dependence on him to draw near to the one who loved us first. <clears throat> Approaching with confidence because Christ has torn away the veil, he has washed away the sin that has kept us from the presence of, the presence of God. And we live in relationship with our God. And so we ask that his kingdom come, his will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. That is essentially prayer. Now, are we content to talk to Moses? Now, when I'm talk, saying Moses, in Exodus chapter 19, we see that how Moses goes up to the mountain, talks with God, and comes down to the people and tells the people what God told him. That was how they did it in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, we as believers have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. And many times we're just content to talk to some uh, youth pastor or a speaker or a leader who spent time with God and then we're like, tell me about it, how was it? What was the experience like? Don't we understand that we, have, we can go to the presence of God ourselves? You know, it is better than hearing from me or the youth pastor or the youth leader. It is, it is those times that you get when no one else is around and you bypass all those people and have direct communication with God. That's the most blessed and raw time in my life I have experienced with God. It's just me and God. And I just tell him how much I love him and how much I want to follow him. And when he teaches me something from his word, please, Lord, give me the courage to live like this and to do this, even if no one else is doing it. And have those moments with God that carry throughout the day. So we're not content with what people like Moses have to say, but what God has to say. God, I want to know you. I want to personally know you. People have different ideas when they hear the word prayer. For some people, it is a ritual. For some people, it is a yearning. Or even some, for some people, it's, it's a punishment. It's like, I must pray this, I must do that. There is a guilt or this or that. But what we see in scripture, it talks about the fascinating truth that God himself wants a relationship with us. He wants to know us and he wants us to know him. This idea of prayer, as we see in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says here, pray continuously, never cease praying. Also in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, uh, uh, Paul talks about how the spirit-filled person is always giving thanks to God for everything. It is a continuous conversation with him. That's how our relationship with God is supposed to be, where it is a continual conversation. Like right now, you're looking at me, I'm speaking to you. 
But God is also speaking to you. He is in relationship with you. He is in communication with you. And so it's just a constant communication, which I believe is at the heart of prayer. Is just saying, God, I want to stay connected with you. You know, many people have issues on how they can talk to God as their father. What the, let us see what the scripture says. In Psalm 68, verse 5, it says that God is a father to the fatherless. And it's one of those things that you cannot really explain, you know, on paper. But when you look at Romans chapter 8, it says that when we receive the spirit of the Lord and we pray to him, there is something internally that happens. It says in 8, 15, Romans chapter 8, verse 15, when we, we cry out, Abba, Father. It really does not have anything to do with if you had a great natural relationship with your dad, but there is something spiritual that happens when the Holy Spirit that is in you, then there is a connection with God, and you know how to cry out to him as a dad, and, and that comes through the Holy Spirit of God. Something that will greatly help our prayer life is looking through the scriptures and understanding what God is like and understanding his attributes and thinking about him before you start talking. Because depending on who we are talking to, we change our speech, don't we? We think about who they are, their relationship with us. Like, for example, if you are standing before a judge, you're not going to talk to him like you're talking to your brother, baby brother, or baby sister. Or if Obama shows up at your doorstep tomorrow to meet with you, you're not going to say to him, what's up, bro? No, you're not. You're going to address him as Mr. President and sir. In the same way, we are coming before, before God and standing in his presence with all of his majesty. We have to think about how do we want to approach him. He's a real person. He's listening to us. When we read Hebrews chapter, chapter 5 or 7, we see that Jesus prayed. That when he prayed, he was heard because of his irreverent submission to God. We might be thinking, Jesus was heard for his reverence? We think Jesus would be heard no matter what, right? But even when Jesus prayed, he had the reverence for the Father. And that's something we have lost over time. And we just are taught to pray whatever and just throw the words and some words in the air. No, think about who we are speaking to. Let's have some serious reverence for God. And then when we pray, speak directly to him. Have you ever been asked or have you ever asked this question? Why do we pray if God already knows everything? I mean, I don't think there's a perfect answer for that question, but some of us, including me, have experienced instant answers when we pray to God about specific matters in our lives or healing or whatever it may be. That was not a coincidence. God listened to our prayer and then he supernaturally answered our prayer. But does that mean we understand everything about prayer? Like sometimes when we pray, we don't get answers the way we want him to answer. Do we understand his whole plan in our lives at that moment? We certainly don't. Sometimes we pray for something and it does not get answered or it may take years for it to get answered. But we should know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, that when we pray specifically, God can supernaturally answer that prayer, whatever it may be. And sometimes in our faith, we try so hard to understand things that our minds will never comprehend. Rather, just be obedient in faith and say, God asked me to pray for these things, and he says, knock, and the door will be opened. He said, seek and you shall find and ask and it will be given to you. And when we do that in faith and we, we will reap the rewards of that. You know, yes, there will be times when we don't get it 
And yes, there will be times when we don't get what we specifically ask for. But I'm telling you, there's nothing greater than seeing those answered prayers and experiencing that. And I know for a fact that God is listening to me. There will be things in our life that are going to be left unanswered. And you won't know why until the end. God wants us to hear from us and its, and, and, and its heart. The per, and at its heart, the purpose of prayer is to help deepen your relationship with God. You might be in a place where prayer just seems like a religious ritual or tradition or just having trouble understanding why God is not answering your prayer. Please know that God is listening to you and he really wants to hear from you. And at the right time, he will answer you. Praise the Lord. Amen.